The Beriev A-50 is a Russian-built airborne early warning and control aircraft designed and developed by the Beriev Design Bureau in the 1970s. The aircraft is based on the Ilyushin EL-76 transport aircraft and has been modified to carry a large rotating radar antenna on its top. By 2011, Russian Air Force operated 20 of these aircraft. Some sources report that in 2022, Russia operated only 9 A-50 aircraft, including 3 upgraded A-50M and 6 A-50U aircraft, though it is unclear how many of these aircraft were airworthy. On February 28, 2023, a Belarusian partisan group, BIPOL, flew a drone over the airspace of the Machulishchi airfield where a Russian A-50 was stationed. The drone then dropped an explosive on the radar dome and another explosive on the cockpit. Both munitions had only 200 grams of explosives in them, but this was enough to damage the high-tech radar system. By the way, the video you are seeing was released later by the Belarusian partisan group, stating that this was a recon flight two days earlier of the attack to test the security around one of Russia's most expensive planes. As you can see, the security was non-existent. They were able to just fly over the perimeter of the airfield and land their drone straight on the dome of the A-50. Russia uses these planes to coordinate missile attacks against Ukrainian infrastructure. Every time there has been a missile attack, one of these A-50s has been in the air. After the plane was damaged, Russia retaliated by firing its anti-air S-300 missiles into Ukrainian civilian targets. We can only assume that the retaliation would have been a massive missile attack with Iskanders and Galibrus, but they did not have an A-50 in the air to coordinate it. See what I did there? <laughs> I want to know where I'm from, so I'm going to take a DNA test and share the results with you guys. Let's go. I chose my heritage. My heritage is a leading global family history and DNA service. If you want to explore your family tree or take a DNA test and find out where you're from, my heritage is perfect for that. Taking the test is super easy. You take out this cotton stick, you rub the inside of your cheek against it and the other cheek also, you put it into a tube, you package it and you send it away. And until we wait until it arrives, here's a photo of my grandfather and check this out, what my heritage can do with it. Animate. Whoa, that is weird. Also kind of looks like him. They can animate photos of your forefathers. All right, my friends, are you ready to find out where I am from? Arthur, ready to explore your ethnicity? I don't know what I'm gonna find out. Baltic, 65%. I'm Baltic. Finnish, 27. Suomi Berkele, Suomi Mainitu, Torina Tavataan. Satana, Scandinavian, 7.9%. I'm a Viking, yeah? Helvete. For fun. So that's the DNA overview. I'll extend the family, five of them. I got a right to all of them. What the hell? 11,700 distant relatives. My family is big. DNA matches, what do we have? You can't view this information. These are my private relatives. Close your eyes. You can go down a rabbit hole exploring your DNA results in my heritage. There's so much you can play around with. Buy a DNA kit by clicking a link in the description below. And use the coupon code Artur for free shipping. As an added bonus, you can start a 30-day free trial of my heritage best subscription for family history research and enjoy a 50% discount if you decide to continue it. My heritage, my friends. The damaging of the plane was picked up by almost all mainstream media and was also covered in the United Kingdom's Ministry of Defense analysis of the Ukrainian war. This attack showed how easy it is to damage one of Russia's most valuable air assets. It showed how a $3,000 drone can damage a $330 million plane. But why is the A-50 such a big deal? Isn't Russia supposed to have a lot of them? Well, yes, but in reality, no. By 2022, only nine of these were in Russian Air Force operational list, but knowing how loosely Russians throw around numbers, I mean, Russians have about 10,000 T-72s, but why are they using T-62s? Think about that. We can only assume that about half of these nine planes don't actually work and are in the list to keep the repair money flowing into the general's pockets. Corruption, am I right? <laughs> so let's say Russians have about five A-50s that actually work, costing about 330 million USD each. 
taking out one of them is a blow to the Russian armed forces comparable to the sinking of the cruiser Moskva. The A-50 is a crucial element of any modern air defense system. It is designed to provide early warning and surveillance of incoming enemy aircraft, missiles and other airborne threats. The aircraft's radar system, which is its most distinctive feature, is capable of detecting and tracking airborne targets at ranges up to 600 kilometers away, making it a highly effective platform for both defensive and offensive operations. The radar system of the A-50 is mounted on a roto-dome, which is a large dome-shaped structure that rotates at high speeds to provide continuous coverage of the airspace surrounding the aircraft. The roto-dome is 9 meters in diameter and rotates at a speed of 6 revolutions per minute. The radar can track up to 300 targets simultaneously, wow, providing early warning to friendly forces of incoming threats. The A-50's radar system is also capable of providing detailed information about the size, speed and trajectory of the detected targets, allowing the mission commander to identify and prioritize the most significant threats. The aircraft can also act as a command and control center, coordinating the actions of other aircraft and ground-based air defense systems to intercept incoming threats. The A-50 is powered by four Solovyev D-30KP2 turbofan engines, which provide it with a top speed of around 800 km per hour and a range up to 5,000 km. This aircraft is operated by a crew of 15, including a flight crew of five, and 10 officers who manage the whole airborne early warning system. The crew is responsible for operating the aircraft's complex avionics systems, including the radar, communications and navigation equipment. The A-50 has seen action in several conflicts, including the First Gulf War, the Kosovo War and the Russian military intervention in Syria. In the first Gulf War, the A-50s operated by the Soviet Air Force were used to provide early warning to Iraqi forces, but were reportedly not very effective due to technical problems. Where have I heard that before? Soviet tech not being very effective due to technical problems. <laughs> The aircraft's performance was later improved through a series of upgrades and modifications. In the Kosovo War, A-50s operated by the Russian Air Force provided early warning to Serbian forces, allowing them to take evasive action against NATO airstrikes. The aircraft also played a vital role in coordinating Russian airstrikes against rebel groups in Syria, providing early warning of Turkish and Israeli aircraft. The A-50's advantages are its long-range detection capabilities, its ability to track multiple targets simultaneously and its ability to operate in harsh environmental conditions. The aircraft is also highly versatile, capable of performing a wide range of missions including surveillance, reconnaissance and command and control. In conclusion, the Beriev A-50 is a highly capable airborne early warning and control aircraft that has played a critical role in several conflicts. Its large rotating radar antenna, avionics systems and long-range detection capabilities make it a valuable asset for any air force. Despite its age, the A-50 remains a highly effective platform and is likely to remain in service with the Russian and Indian Air Force for many years to come. What about the United States counterparts? The Boeing E-3 Sentry is an American early warning and control aircraft used by the United States Air Force, NATO, French Air and Space Force, Royal Saudi Air Force and the Chilean Air Force. It provides all weather surveillance, command, control and communications and is derived from the Boeing 737 airliner. The E-3 has a rotating radar dome above the fuselage and production ended in 1992 after 68 aircraft had been built. This number gives us an idea of the cost and production of the plane. They were never built in hundreds, not even in the US. The United States Air Force picked Boeing to construct two airframes to test Westinghouse Electric and Hughes competing radars, with Westinghouse's design emerging as the contract winner. The first United States Air Force E-3 was delivered in March 1977, and during the next seven years a total of 34 aircraft were manufactured. 
E3s were also purchased by NATO members like the United Kingdom, France and Saudi Arabia. The aircraft played a crucial role in directing coalition aircraft against Iraqi forces during the Persian Gulf War. The E3's capabilities have been maintained and enhanced throughout numerous upgrades. In April 2022, the United States Air Force announced that the Boeing 737 AWAC will be replacing the E3 beginning in 2027. What is the Boeing 737 AWAC? It is a twin-engine airborne early warning and control aircraft based on the Boeing 737 next generation design. It is designed for the Royal Australian Air Force under Project Wedgetail. It is lighter than the 707-based Boeing E3 Sentry and features a fixed active electronically scanned radar antenna instead of a rotating one. Russians are reacting to the new AWACS in the NATO countries and have given in their own order of the new A-50. The A-100. What an original name. <laughs> The A100 is based on the IL-76MD-90A and is equipped with more powerful engines. The aircraft features a rotating dome that houses the Vega Premier AESA radar with electronic steering and can detect aerial targets up to 600 km away and warships up to 400 km away. The A100 also has a new electronic warfare suit, navigation system and communication systems. Russia's aerospace forces are expected to begin delivery of the A100 in 2024, but sanctions have caused delays in the project. Most likely, this new Russian AWAC will never be in production, much like the T-14 Armata. Building these new high-tech military platforms requires the newest software and hardware, which is under sanctions for Russia. What is weird is that after being sanctioned in 2014 and again after the full-scale invasion of Ukraine in 2022, Russian Ministry of Defense is still announcing high-tech new weapon platforms and orders them on paper, but in reality this is an attempt to look like they still have the capability to produce their own high-tech military platforms which they don't. My friends, I now want to read you five patron names who support this channel with tier 10 or above. Peter G. Kelly, Matt Kang, Patruskin, Mark Svenei, Timothy D. Kweta. If you want me to butcher your name, say it like you never heard it before, become a tier 10 and above and also get your military blog in the patron in the description below. Until my next video, my friends, Slava Ukraini.